Next up, we have RCD Pharma, and here to present the company is CEO Mia Lundblad. Welcome, Mia. The floor is yours. Thank you. So, the next 15 minutes, I'm going to introduce you to RCD Pharma. I will also give you a background to the disease, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that we aim to treat, and also give you an introduction and background to our drug candidate, RCD-405. So, starting with the vision of RCD Pharma. We aim to provide treatments for patients with chronic obstructive airway diseases, and with the aim to obtain fewer and less severe symptoms, but also improve the quality of the lives for these patients and prolong their survival. And this is actually in line with the UN Agenda 2030, where one of the specific goals is to decrease the number of deaths related to non-transmittable diseases. The company and the management team consists of a group of people with a long and solid experience within drug development, all the way from preclinical research until clinical development and to market access. Of importance to note is also that the company has been listed on the Spotlight stock market since June last year, and together with the main founder, the management team owns about 16% of the shares. So over to the actual disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that we aim to treat. And that is the disease that causes a lot of suffering for the patients. Most of the symptoms are shown on this picture here, and the main and important ones being a chest tightness, a hypersecretion of mucus, a constant cough, and also difficulties breathing and getting air called dyspnea. It's also important to note and understand that uh, COPD is actually caused by a constant inflammation. And that inflammation, it's also uh, leading to a progressiveness of the disease. The inflammation itself usually causes exacerbation, with our, which are acute worsening of the symptoms of these, in these patients. And these exacerbations can cause and lead to hospitalizations and in the end also death. Also from the society, COPD causes a high burden. Looking at globally, actually more than 3 million people die of this disease yearly and actually it's the third leading cause of death worldwide. From a productivity point of view and activity point of view for these patients, it's also quite a burden. Looking at some numbers, in 2019, the 212 million prevalent cases accounted for about 74 million dailies, and one daily being equivalent to the loss of one year of complete health. So you can see only in one year, the prevalent cases of COPD, they lost more than 74 million years of complete health. In addition, these patients suffer from a lot of comorbidities. The main ones being associated with cardiovascular diseases and heart diseases, but also depression is a common disease among these patients. The costs associated with COPD are also very high. The healthcare budget only in the EU for one year amounts to about 40 billion euros. And the same amount uh, is, is prevalent for, for the US only. And what are then the main factors that drive these costs? Seen in this graph below, it's actually obvious that it's the hospitalizations. And as I said before, hospitalizations are due to the exacerbations and the high inflammation level. And they, in the end, also usually then cause the death of these patients. So it's really important to be able to target the underlying inflammation, causing the exacerbations and, in the end, these hospitalizations, not only on a patient level, but on also 
from an economic perspective. So what are then the current treatment options and the available and recommended drugs? You can divide them into mainly two different groups. The bronchodilators that have an effect on the underlying and the airflow limitations and then the inhaled corticosteroids which dampen the inflammation. But none of these drugs really have an effect on the underlying disease and they don't have an effect on the decline in lung function. Many of those drugs also have a decreased effect over time and they are associated with safety concerns. Looking at some numbers, about 50% of the patients, even though they are adequately treated, still experience symptoms. And about 30, even up to 40% remain and still have exacerbations. So there is a really a need for different mode of action drugs that actually target the underlying disease mechanism. And here RCD 405, our drug candidate, offers a good potential new drug alternative. It has a new mode of action and a unique mode of action. We have also documented actually that it has both an anti-inflammatory effect as well as an bronchodilating effect. And it targets several of these underlying causes that are involved in COPD. So by that, we can see has the potential of affecting several of these symptoms involved in COPD. And these effects we have demonstrated before in in vitro and, and ex vivo studies. Now we have also been able to confirm them in in vivo studies in animals. So starting with the airway relaxation, we have used a mice model, an airway hyperreactivity mice model, where we induced bronchoconstriction or airway constriction with the help of metacholin, a potent bronchoconstrictor. And when then adding our drug, RCD405, we saw a clear relaxation of the airways. And this is demonstrated in this graph by the difference between the red line, where no drug was given, and the blue line, in both graphs where RCD405 was given. And this is obvious and uh, also shown in both the lungs, which is the graph to the left, and the central airways, which is the graph to the right. Furthermore, we have also seen this anti-inflammatory effect. We have shown it previously in in vitro studies, and now again, we have confirmed it in in vivo studies in mice. After inducing an inflammation response and then adding our drug or dosing with our drug RCD405, there was a clear reduction of many of these pro-inflammatory cytokines involved in the inflammation. These data here on this graph also shows the immune cell response, which are also an important factor in the induction of inflammation. So here you see both the important neutrophils and inflammatory macrophages, as well as the eosinophils, they are reduced. And that you can see from each graph here, from the blue bar to the left in all the three graphs, where RCD405 was given, compared to the lighter blue graph where no drug was given. So with these very positive results, we are of course eager to continue our development with RCD405 and get into the clinic as soon as possible. However, we need to first complete a few activities. One of them, of course, being to complete and finalize the last non-rodent tox study. We also want to continue and finalize our development together with Econovo. And we want to further characterize some of the properties of RCD405 in order to get a better understanding and prediction for the dose setting in the clinic. And also we are aimed to perform a market analysis to better understand the COPD market. So with that in summary, 
it has been shown here in these slides and with these numbers here that COPD is a disease with a high unmet medical need. And here we see the potential with RCD405, our drug candidate, that has this dual mechanism of action and unique mode of action, targeting not only the bronchoconstriction part, has an anti-inflammatory effect. We also see that there is a large market and commercial potential. The drug sales market already today amounts to about 20 billion euros. And this is expected to increase with about 5 to 6% per year in the coming decade. We also have a good patent protection with our compound in the major markets until 2039. And we are confident that with our current team and competences in the management team with our consultants and also our newly engaged advisors, which are renowned in the field of COPD and asthma, that we will be able to as efficiently and as safely as possible get into the clinical development phase as soon as possible. So with that, I want to conclude my presentation and thank you. RCD is a rather young company, not even one year old. Uh, how's the journey been so far? It has been an exciting journey and a journey where I have learned a lot, uh, but also a very positive journey uh, during the last yeah, eight months. Mm -hmm. What would you say has been the most um, uh, exciting thing about this journey so far? Yeah, both that we have actually generated a lot of results, uh, which we, of course, a also aimed to do, but uh, that we actually see the progress and the development of our project. And also with a lot of new contacts and good advisors and consultants being engaged, which has been very positive. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of which, to help you along in this journey, you've recently engaged a couple of scientific advisors. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about them and uh, what their roles will be? Yes, we have uh, Professor Arne Egesten here from Lund University and he is both a clinician but also a researcher and has his own research group and they have generated some of these data that I presented before. And uh, it's good to have this both local support but also with both from the research side but also with the patient contacts and the clinical in-depth knowledge, I would say. Then we have uh, Professor Clive Page from the UK, who is a very renowned um, person in this area and has a lot of contacts and has been involved in many of other development projects for drug developments and also has a very thorough knowledge in the research area of COPD and asthma and a big network of people. Mm -hmm. well, those are great assets to have for sure. Yes. Um, you mentioned in the presentation that you're finalizing the toxicology studies for uh, RCD405. Um, do you have a, a, a timeline for when do you expect the results for these? Yes, um, the dosing will actually start here in end of April. It will then take four weeks, including two weeks recovery and analysis of results. So we expect to have at least preliminary results during the summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, finally, if you had a crystal ball and you could look into the future when RCD Pharma turns uh, two years old, where, were, where will the company be? Yeah, the hope and is and the, my vision is that we will have progressed into the clinic and also have obtained clinical results, at least with safety and hopefully also some preliminary efficacy results so that we can prove that it has an effect and is safe also for the patients. Mm -hmm. Well, looking forward to that uh, two-year two -year birthday for the, for the company. Thank you so much, Mia, for, for joining us and for your presentation today. Thank you very much.